Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome back to the MongoDB series. We are going to continue our series and I will try my best so that I can keep the videos between 10 and 12 minutes which is the precise point of my all videos. Length should be short. Now in this video we are going to talk about some of the things which we have learned in the past, some of the things which you might not be expecting the MongoDB to behave like this. But this is all okay and the more we understand the world of MongoDB, it's going to be easier for us to work it on later on. So let's go ahead and bring up our shell. I expect that everybody is running their shell whether they are on Windows or are either on Mac. I really don't care. The tilde sign should be up and running and this is what we have seen so far. Now in the previous uh, video I showed you that we can use showdbs to show all the databases here and we can use the students and all of that and can switch into that we can insert some data as well. We also learned how we can find out what is existing in my database. Now one thing that some of you might have already faced is while watching the video previous one and this one if you have terminated your shell none of your information is going to be persistent. We have learned how we can uh, prepare our data to be inserted into MongoDB, but actually we haven't saved any data. We haven't used any save command. We're gonna keep that a little bit for the later use, but I also want you to point your attention a little bit on uh, RoboMongo. So in case you watch the videos all in lined up, I told you that RoboMongo is gonna be something which we will be touching up a little bit later, uh, just for a few minutes. Now let me show you how does the RoboMongo looks like. It's almost super easy. So this is the RoboMongo and this is how it looks like. And in case yours look a little bit different than me, then click on this uh, top computer-ish button. And uh, you might not have any connection like this one, so I can just hit a delete key. Or probably I can just remove this. Uh, maybe uh, yours look like this one, completely empty we can actually create any instance of existing RoboMongo here very quickly. Yes, please, you can delete that. So yours might look like this one. Just click on this create button and all of the information that we can see is almost identical here. Just make sure your address says localhost and your port number is 27017. And click on save and there we go. And it's gonna be available. Just click on connect. The moment you're gonna connect, uh, Mines is having previous one as well, so don't worry about them. Uh, we can just hit a disconnect there on that one. Now we have just one. And we have got some system, uh, which is admin and local. And now we have got the student database here, which is created. Now this is being created as quickly as you enter something, but we haven't saved any data in here. Notice here the student data is here. Uh, this is here, and we can see we have index and ID and all of that. But it's not having anything here as of now because we haven't saved any data. We are going to learn how we can save that, but this is how exactly our database looks like in a GUI. And for all the Mac users, I also want to point you when you will be installing the RoboMongo, you might get a security warning that might say, hey, RoboMongo is being downloaded from third party. So go into your settings and uh, security, and you'll see something like this where you have to just click on this open anyway. So since it is not being directly downloaded from App Store, that's why this is a small warning. Now comes up the interesting part about MongoDB. Now, so far we have seen in our things here that uh, how things actually work on with. Uh, let me just go ahead and open MongoDB here. There we go. So this is our JSON data that we have used in the past. What I have mentioned, some of them, like all of it is correct, but there can be some tricky parts here. For example, we have learned we have got an array which has got two objects and this is the key and this is the value. Now, this looks like exactly like a JSON object, but this is not a JSON object. In the MongoDB world, your JSON is converted into BSON data and that it is being saved. Saving the BSON data is much more efficient as compared to the JSON data. That's why MongoDB uses this one. In fact, I would like to point your attention onto this one quick read documentation that I highly recommend everybody to go ahead and read this. So this is a quick guide uh, directly from the MongoDB documentation, JSON and BSON. And it's not a really big documentation, just I can say like less than 100 words or around 100 words. And this will give you a brief idea that why they are doing exactly this. Technically, they look exactly same. They have not much of a difference. A few subtle differences are there. Means, 
uh, you can simply say that BSON is a big set and JSON is a smaller set. Everything that is there in the JSON is definitely there in the BSON, but there are some few fields which are extra in the BSON and which helps MongoDB to save and be efficient about your data. So that's why it is here. And technically, you just have to read through this one. So there we go. I highly recommend to go ahead and read this lines here. Now let's go back here and let me walk you through a couple of caveats here about the MongoDB. Now first and foremost, we learned that how we can add any data here. What we did is just copied and pasted from the exercise file, this one. Now one of the key important aspect about MongoDB that you should be aware of, that not the key, this key part, is not compulsory, compulsory to be wrapped around these double quotation. As long as you wrap it, that's totally fine. That's a good practice. But it is not compulsory that you should always do this. Now, for example, if I just uh, click on this above command here, and notice we did this insert one name here and just like this one. So we can do almost similar kind of thing without even these pair of parentheses. Even we can also omit the omit some of these fields. For example, I can save some data which has just name and email and that's it. As long as we don't have any uh, testing field going around, we can do it. Look, let me just walk you through. So type along with me. We're going to go uh, simply with the above command db.studentdata.insert1. There we go. Insert1. Come on. There we go. And in the pair of parentheses, what we can do is just add a couple of fields only. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply have a name. Notice I'm not using the curly, uh, double quotation around it. I can simply have it. But in the value field, I have to do it. So I'm going to just do a marry here. There we go. And uh, then we have got email. So I'm going to put a comma there. And again, no double quotes there. And I'm going to simply say, uh, Mary at the rate gmail.com fictitious email of course there we go now as long as you don't have any space between these uh, key fields you don't have to put actually a double quotes there okay so just keep in mind spaces are not allowed you cannot put something like this uh, like email uh, one this is this cannot be a key surely uh, something like email one this can be a key okay so as long as we have learned this part now i'm going to close this with a curly brace and i'm going to put a pair of parentheses and that's it we can see that it is acknowledged as true okay so this is you have learned that this is one thing you should be worried about now another thing that you should be worried about is this object id now in the json data object id is not recognized as a valid field even if I try it up here, uh, it is not going to be recognized. Even my editor might throw some of the errors on me. But in the world of BSON, it is totally allowed. So later on, we are going to have a little bit more discussion when we are going to touch Mocha about this object ID. Just keep, a, keep in mind, it is very good for interviews as well. This, this object ID is a true validation that yes, uh, MongoDB is storing all of my data as BSON, not as a JSON. Okay, now that is all good. Let's try to retrieve some of the data by using this db.student.studentdata.find. And we're going to use this pretty as well. So we're going to say dot pretty. And there we go. Now let's also notice some of the other things here. Now, I did provided only some certain fields. Some are automatically being generated by MongoDB. For example, this underscore ID. This is a unique identifier. And usually it is uh, a value of object ID than a long string. That's all I know about it as of now. But definitely I can provide certain of these IDs as long as they are unique. That's the only uh, big criteria here. They should be unique and that's it. Let me walk you through again with some of the interesting example here. Okay, so I'm going to put up another field here and notice I'm providing instead of the Mary, I'm going to go for Harry. Uh, that's a very rhymy name. Uh, we're going to go for Harry. There we go. Now, as I told you that you don't need to actually provide, uh, you don't need to actually automatically generate this ID. You can provide your IDs as well. So I'm going to put a comma here and uh, there we go. And I'm going to provide this object, this underscore ID now. So again, it should not be ID. It should not be like capital ID. It should always be underscore ID. Now I'm going to provide a value for this ID. Now, as long as you wish, you can provide any ID here. For example, I'm going to say one, two, three, uh, ABC and uh, dash W. 
I'm totally going uh, crazy random here. Notice here, this is our thing here. So I'm providing here is, uh, there we go. Oops. Okay, looked like my terminal got a little bit crazy wonko here. So I'm gonna start it again from the insert one. And in case you wish, I can show you again dot uh, pretty. I haven't inserted any data yet. So let's just try it one more time. So there we go. We have got only this part here. Now I'm gonna try the insert one again. We have got a Mary again. Sometimes my terminal goes a little bit crazy. So I'm gonna go for Harry. Uh, maybe I can use all lowercase to make it a little bit consistent. And I'm gonna go for Harry again. And I want to provide another field, which is my object ID. Now I'm gonna provide underscore ID. This cannot be changed. This name field always should be exactly like ID. In case you want to provide an uh, your generated ID, make sure it's unique. And the system will provide you one if you're not gonna provide a unique ID. Now again, let's go a little bit wonkers here. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, A, B, C, dash, W. So this is the ID that I wanted to give. And you will notice that system will accept my ID, no problem at all. So let's try hit enter. And there we go, it says acknowledge true and inserted ID is also here. Let's try to see what is there inside our database. So we can see we have got a couple of fields here and notice the last one. Now it is not formatted as we wish to be. Sometimes my terminal goes a little bit crazy, but we can see that our ID field is here, just like this ID field. But instead of the object ID, this is our uh, own generated string. It is not at all advisable to go through like this way. This is not recommended. This is just for teaching purposes. And I want you to understand that yes, what is possible and what is not. Now, another interesting thing is that these IDs should be unique. If you'll try to run this command again, which is inserting any ID and ID is like anything. Let's just say we have got another user, which is Harry one. And let's just name as Harry one as well. Now this is not gonna be accepted because it doesn't have the unique ID. So as I hit enter, it's gonna give me an error that, hey, that's not possible because this exact ID is already existed in my database. So there we go. You have learned a couple of more things. Definitely we have learned not a new command, but definitely a little bit about the object IDs, JSON and BSON data. So as a quick assignment for this particular video, go ahead and read out this documentation. This is very important. And in case you find any other documentation about JSON and BSON, please go ahead and read that. You don't need to go too much into depth, but yes, definitely you should know that these are two different things. One last thing before we end this video, you don't need to do anything about the BSON. All the time in MongoDB, you'll be writing all of your code in the JSON data format. MongoDB automatically converts everything that you write as a JSON into the BSON. You don't have to do anything ever. So that's it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and let's catch up in the next video.